I've heard so many things this evening that I want to jump back on, but I'm going to just keep it to my own presentation and uh, talk later to all the people involved. But I want to talk about what you just said, that change is coming. I believe that. I don't get goosebumps. Um, I believe that because I believe that our generation, even though you call us old, um, because I sit here, I was in the in the class with Jan, and I see many other people of my years here as well. Um, we we think differently than generations before us, and we are putting it to good use. And Corona has made us even more resilient and even more creative in how we use our talents. And we have many many talents. So a nice shirt that said "talented." Louis Gauchel loved it. So I've been back in Curacao for the last two and a half years because my husband wanted to come back. I thought, yeah, there's nothing for me in Curacao, career-wise. Uh, but he wanted to come back. I said, I'll give it a try. And when I came back, my mind was blown of the changes that I'm seeing on the island. Somehow, I ended up living in Otra Banda. Um, Otra Banda, Serie uh, Otra Banda to be specific, it's a neighborhood that has a lot of people who are dependent on uh, um, tourism for jobs, odd jobs, hotel jobs, stuff like that. In the pandemic, um, a lot of our neighbors lost their jobs, and we as neighbors decided that we're going to start producing our own food. Traditional agriculture as we know it, from when we became best and cavemen and started building our own stuff, is always to have many things in one spot, um, using a lot of water, using a lot of chemicals, using a lot of uh, nutrients that go to waste, using a lot of fossil fuels to produce food, sometimes not in the most ideal conditions. If we talk about not ideal conditions, um, I want to talk about Curacao and the belief that we have here that you cannot grow anything here. I have two volunteers in the, in the public. Let's consider this the soil of Curacao. It's dry, it's um, interesting, and you can do anything with it. I gave both of you a glass of water. I'm going to forget about those. <laughs> we'll get back to that. What we thought in Otra Banda is that we are going to put use, um, knowledge to use of people who know so much better than we do. I see a lot of my, my peeps here in the, <laughs> in the crowd. We have a lot of people who know a lot about how to grow in a more sustainable way. In monoculture, when you have big pieces of land with one specific thing growing on it, it's not the best use of resources, time, or energy, in my belief. So we decided to do this in a circular way. As most things circular, when you use the resources to keep everything in the system, you make the system stronger and you need less outside resources. If you grow food more locally, you use less carbon for transport for everything else. People are forgetting how to grow their own food. When you do it locally, they see it. And you create more local jobs as well. So what we did in Otter Banda is we picked a few spots and we just started with the most, um, the best thing we knew at that moment in time, which is syntropic and hydroponics systems. Um, when you use circular agriculture, you need minimal input from the outside. Being an island, it's difficult to get things here sometimes. It's expensive. It's dirty. So it's cost effective and low threshold to build your resources here. The nutrients stay in the system and your system becomes stronger. And that's very kind to the environment. I'm all for that. Waste becomes a tradable um, commodity. You can use somebody else's waste as your input. And that means that you can go on almost forever. Why is it important for Curacao? We can grow more than what we're doing right now, but a lot of people just don't believe that it's possible. There are some people who believe that everything is possible here, and I support that. We can create more jobs. We can provide people with healthier alternatives. 
growing your own food in your own garden even. You have less carbon imprint with every bite that you put in your mouth and you will have less waste. Sometimes when you walk through the supermarket, I'm scared of how much plastic there is on everything that you are buying. Because what do you need to actually grow stuff? You need clean air, you need sun, we have that there. You need soil and you need water. And what is soil? What is dirt? A lot of people talk about how bad yourself dirt is. It isn't. It's what you put in it and what you take out of it that actually makes the quality of the dirt. I'm an earth scientist, economist, so um, this is my background. You can start with bedrock and just make it better until you have good soil. And if you talk about that soil, if you've ever been in the Ferdinandstraat in Otrabanda, this is our plot in July 2020. It's in Ferdinandstraat. It's, if you've been to a Kaya Kaya park, you probably had the Kalkiriba blocky there. Because um, there were the bathrooms in the back there. When I came to live uh, in Otrabanda, this was a place where a person that was living illegally squatted. So we had broken cars, 27 dogs, and all sorts of things living there. But they cleaned it out for the party, and we thought, my spot, it's 11 by 11 meters, not too big. What can you grow there? This is six months later. Six months later, we had already handed out over 300 packages of vegetables to our neighbors. We have this community garden where people come together and grow their own food, and when you work, you get your food for free. This is a Centropic Agroforestry Garden. If you want more details, you can talk to Benjamin, he knows all about it. Um, it's where you grow a lot of different species of food in a little small area, using a lot of plants as biomass to make your soil improve over time. We have a hydroponics system, which is a system that uses no soil at all. We grow in water, which means that you have a fast turnover and that you can grow what we call our tradable goods. Because with this quality of salad, we sell those to the restaurants and then we can pay other people to grow more stuff. We use and we repurpose a lot of stuff in the neighborhood. We use the reuse stuff to grow in them, to buffer water, to uh, haul uh, mulch, to build planting beds that to, would be considered non-traditional. Because a non if you don't have money to pay for it to start with, but you can make something grow out of it, it will become something valuable. We use things like cardboard, old newspapers, um, food waste, sargassum, ashes from barbecues, we can use a lot of stuff that are being thrown out right now to grow food here on our island. And one of the things that we use most is garden waste. So um, if you have a lot of a mango tree in your tree in your garden, talk to me later. <laughs> um, we use uh, wood, we use leaves, so that we can put the nutrients back in the soil. As I said, we mulch. This is the most important part of what we do. We make sure that there's no square inch of soil barren. We put a lot of nutrients back in the soil by using all sorts of waste from other people's garden to cover the floor. And why is this important? When you have a mulch layer of at least 10 centimeters, it holds water in the ground. It will stabilize the temperature, which means that the plants will have a more relaxed living environment. It will build up nutrients, make your soil richer. It produces a perfect habitat for all sorts of insects and fungi to improve your garden. You will need to weed less because that's a big thing with a lot of farmers. And it will reduce the soils flowing away when it rains really hard. And I think I skipped. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Because what we do on land is important for everything that happens around us as well. The more we plant on the island, the more water we maintain in the water cycle of our island. Which means that if I grow more green, somebody else will be able to grow more green as well because we will have more water in our cycle and more rain will be attracted to the island as well. 
With more green on land, we will protect also our reefs around the islands because we will have less sediment washing out instead of, uh, right now when it rains really hard, you see torrents of water in the city of Ottoman and going down Luna Blau, crossing the road, going into the Anabai with lots of soil with it as well. And that's not good for our mangroves and our reefs. When we have more green on the island, we'll protect our biodiversity on the island as well. I've got the, from Brivegat um, beautiful videos of bugs that we haven't seen in quite a while that are coming back. And the more we reuse, the less trash will end up next to the roads. What we have learned in uh, the year and a half that we've been working on Otrabanda, water is and will always be a bottleneck here on the island. So it's very important that we keep it on our island and in our system. And people have to see it to believe it. I remember sitting in Otterbanda on that barren piece of plot, everybody had to come with their own chair, and we were sitting there and we thought, yeah, I'm going to grow food there, and all the neighbors were laughing and saying, hey, you're a woman. Um, <laughs> and then now they come with their re reusable bags to get their vegetables, now they believe me. And another thing that I really love seeing is we gave a course at a certain point so that people could grow their own food at home as well. And when we were handing out the free vegetables, always the wonky cucumbers and the weird shaped paprikas would stay behind. And now in the WhatsApp group that we have, you see the most horrible cucumbers come by and look how nice, my own cucumber. <laughs> and, proud. and they make pictures from all sides and then they, they, they send pictures of the salad that they made with the one cherry tomato. And uh, so the mentality about food has changed in the neighborhood as well. People have eaten stuff that they have never eaten before. What we need in Curacao is that the flow of goods need to be flowing a little bit better. So there's a lot of room for improvement. As I said, if you have a mango tree in your garden, talk to me later, I need more mulch. And what I know in my gut is there's never a perfect moment to start with something. You just have to jump in and go with it because if you believe in it enough, good things will come to you. And I don't want to sound flaky, but we've done it, so I know it's true. Our Ferdinand Food Forest is not big. It's 11 by 12 meters. And we have in total now five gardens. We use 20 big bags of mulch, you know, the big bags of mulch every month. And we have eight families that are collecting those for us. We use in a dry month about 8,000 liters of water. And we provide vegetables on a monthly basis for 50 families. We created three part-time jobs and that will become more in the future because we have people who are earning their money with helping me in the garden on a weekly basis. We will have people who will be manning our own vegetable shop in a little bit. We have people who are teaching others how to grow their own food. And we are going to be selling outside of the neighborhood as well. So we will produce more farm to table for our own neighborhood. Okay. Before we go there, my two volunteers, how is your class doing? You remember the dry piece of curacao and ground? I will not turn this one over. <laughs> we just added water and look what happens. There's so much more possible that you can believe if you have the right ingredients and you just mix them together. And I believe that our generation is that ingredient, the bridge between what is possible and what people think is impossible. That's us. So thank you very much.